Hi, everyone, and welcome to CodeNARC Revisited. I'm Jen Schrader, or as you may know me on Twitter, the Code Generator. And uh, I have been contributing to CodeNARC for a while. At one point, even spent uh, 10 months here in Denmark working on some new rules and learning more about how CodeNARC and kind of static analysis tools work in general. Uh, my day job, though, is as a developer advocate for Gradle Inc., the company you may know from the build tool, uh, as well as our commercial products like Gradle Enterprise, which now works for both Gradle and Maven. Uh, I have uh, experience in a lot of different groovy technologies, though, so I uh, used to work with some Grails projects, Spring Boot, uh, lots of other things as well that have kind of influenced the uh, decisions that I've made to contribute or uh, even just help address some of the issues with CodeNARC as a technology. So I have a couple different options here for what we can talk about today. So I'm uh, going to go kind of based on your audience feedback. So who here has used CodeNARC before? Uh, and who has uh, written a rule using CodeNARC or their own custom rule using CodeNARC before? OK, so we definitely need to go over that. Uh, and I'll do a little bit of a brief introduction as to what CodeNARC is, uh, but won't spend as much time on it as like a pure introductory talk. So first, what is CodeNARC? So CodeNARC is, as I've said before, a static analysis tool. That means that it goes beyond just standard linting, uh, like you would expect from some other tools. And it gives you some analysis into perhaps potential bugs or problematic software patterns that you may, be, uh, may have in your code. And it, it, with the idea that we run these checks before any code gets to production, uh, and even help uh, make the review process even smoother. And uh, there are a lot of different advantages to why, uh, why you should use CodeNARC. And the first one is to improve readability and kind of to create some standards for your team and your organization and the code base in general which will hopefully have the result of saving some time on code reviews. There are uh, lots of different uh, studies as far as like backing this up with data to uh, that you can, you being a code reviewer, can actually uh, read a little bit easier if everything is standardized as far as spacing. But it also prevents uh, some very simple bugs from getting into the code uh, for the the person who's, who's writing and submitting that pull request. It can also be really helpful to onboard some new team members. And what I mean by that is the uh, perhaps more junior people that are just getting started, uh, and by giving them a framework and structure for how they should be writing their code, as well as the, uh, the profile, the, the Java developer converting to, to using Groovy, and some new team members to your, to your team. So the, argument that I, uh, I think of here is that if you're working in a large enterprise organization where each team kind of has its own standards, if you have uh, either a standards document or a tool like CodeNARC, when someone, when you switch teams or restructure, uh, someone new coming into that code base knows what to expect and your pull requests and uh, your feedback cycles are going to be shorter. But even uh, Everyone can benefit from a tool like CodeNARC because uh, it, it helps, helps everyone. So if you do want to get started with CodeNARC, uh, you should start with the website. It is a SourceForge address, uh, but it, it does still exist, and I'll, I'll kind of show you what it looks like. The mailing list and everything are still there as well. But even though it is uh, perhaps not the most elegant website you've seen. It is functional and working. And the project is moving forward. So there was a release just the other day uh, on Sunday to release the, the new 1.4 uh, candidate, or sorry, 1.4 one, one actual release. So let's take a look at uh, what you would do to, to add CodeNARC to a project. So I'm going to get out of here and go to iTerm. Uh, where I've already run this, but let's look at what this code is doing in general. So what I did is I, I used the Gradle init plugin to create a generic uh, application, which is just 
uh, printing hello world here. And in my build Gradle folder, I, sorry, build Gradle file, I added this CodeNARC uh, plugin ID because Gradle has a, a built-in uh, CodeNARC plugin. If you're using uh, Grails before version three or uh, Maven or something else, then uh, there are compatible plugins for that as well. Uh, and you need to, in the Gradle version anyway, configure a few things to get started. So uh, because the new version uh, 1.4 came out, and that's not going to be the default version that uh, the Gradle plugin is going to use, I want to overwrite that and use the, the new version that came out the other day. I'm going to start and try to uh, use the same CodeNARC file here to configure all of these rules. And so what I did is that I started at uh, the wonderful CodeNARC website. And if you go to this left toolbar, there is a starter rule set here, uh, which I opened up in this other tab. And so this is a, a sample Groovy file uh, with all of the different rules in here. And if you need to change any of the configuration spacing, for example, uh, it's a Groovy file, so you can add a, a parameter in here and, uh, and get started. And yeah, so that's how I got to this point in the project. And if we run it, uh, as, as you can already see, I've uh, tried it here in the console log, then we get a standard report uh, because I, I haven't changed this code at all yet. Uh, all I did was add CodeNARC and run it. So by default, this standard application that's created from Gradle does have a few rule violations in here. Now, some of these are going to be things that don't matter as much, and uh, some that maybe we do want to change. These are decisions that you can make with uh, your team as far as uh, which rules to turn on and off. So the first one that shows up here is the Javadoc rule. And uh, for me, that's not as important, so I'm going to go in and turn that off. So if I go back to this codenark.groovy file and find the Javadoc uh, rule, and there are several of them now. Uh, if you haven't looked at CodeNARC in a while, this is one of the things that has changed in more recent versions. There are a lot more rules now related to Javadoc. But I don't necessarily uh, need to write a Javadoc for this really simple application class. So I can uh, condition or turn this off in this case. The other uh, violations that are in here, like print line, for example, is something that I want on my entire project, but I don't care about in this specific case. In fact, it's what I intend to do. It's a demo app that's just outputting to the console. And so in order to do that, what I would do is uh, take this uh, method in which the print line occurs and add a suppress warnings and uh, add the name of the violation, which in this case is print line. The capitalization is going to matter here. And if I uh, run this again, then the the print line, just for this one violation, if I had other instances of print line in my application, those would not be ignored. It's only going to ignore this specific instance of it. And uh, so if I, if I do rerun these, uh, then we would, we would get a uh, completed uh, file. So it runs for both the application source and the tests separately. Uh, if we go back to this configuration, we can see this here. And so there are some rules that are going to vary based on whether you're running tests or whether you're running an application main or uh, your CodeNARC main config. Uh, and so what I'm going to do now is check out uh, the completed version of this uh, project. So I'm going to check out the tag uh, for fixed. Uh, oh, I need to reset the things I've been working on. Uh, check this out. And now I have two different CodeNARC configurations to address some of the things that uh, are, are different. In particular, the things in the tests that vary are related to uh, Spock specific things. So Spock uh, and JUnit uh, are. It, it's just very difficult in general to do this for CodeNARC because there are rules that apply to JUnit that uh, 
that don't apply to Spock. And so I end up uh, turning these off. The other thing that you're going to want to remember, especially if you're working with the Gradle plugin, is that this enhanced rule set uh, doesn't work with the Gradle plugin yet. Uh, that's something on the roadmap to, to change. Uh, of course, I've been saying this for two years now that I'm going to do this, and I still haven't. Uh, but eventually, we will get these rules working with the Gradle uh, Code and Arc plugin. Um, and anyway, uh, so there are a few things. If you want to take a look, uh, I'll commit this source code and post the link to it after the presentation. So that is kind of an example of how to get started with CodeNARC if you weren't familiar with it already, and how to use it uh, in your project. To go back to the presentation, uh, there are, like I said, lots of other ways that you can do this. You don't have to use Gradle. Uh, there's also a recently updated IntelliJ plugin. Uh, I tried to get it working for this demo, but I think I need to, to change the configuration a little bit to, to get that to work. Uh, the Grails 2 plugin all automatically gets updated every time. Uh, hopefully, you're on Grails 3 by now. But if you do have that legacy project that's still using 2, uh, you can use that plugin. Uh, there's also some older plugins for Jenkins, or uh, I don't think anyone's using Hudson anymore. So the, the approach that I started here uh, was to, to add it to a new project. But if you want to add this to an existing project, then uh, you're going to want to, to come up with a strategy for doing so. So you can start with maybe just one project. Uh, you can turn on all the rules, kind of like I did, and then selectively go through and turn those off. Uh, but you really want to look at what those violations are and whether they're important to you or whether it's an artifact of the framework that you're using. Uh, and then hopefully you do go back and fix these. You can also set a threshold if you're using uh, the command line or Gradle plugin. Uh, and eventually just slowly work down that list. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so that is a l brief overview. The things that are important if you haven't looked at CodeNARC in a while are that we've actually gone 1.0. <laughs> so as of, I mean, and this is, this is a while ago, but since the last time that I've given this talk, uh, there were several updates uh, mostly to infrastructure, library versions, et cetera, but also lots of bug fixes. So if you haven't upgraded your libraries, you should do so. And the other kind of important one of note was version 1.3 that came out in January of this year. Uh, it had a lot of those new Javadoc rules that I had mentioned, as well as some fixes to uh, some JUnit rules that maybe you want to, you can turn back on now. And like I mentioned, there was a release that just came out the other day, version 1.4. Uh, the kind of interesting thing in there that uh, I'm not sure how I feel about it yet is that there is a new rule for enforcing static compilation, uh, or at least to specify what you want. So you need to think about whether you want to, each, at a, each class level, whether you want to uh, use compile static, compile dynamic, or even the, the Grails one is allowed there. There's also some more Java doc formatting. And as with every release of CodeNARC, uh, there's bug fixes that get added in as well. So like I've kind of hinted at so far, uh, I'm not a fan of all of the different CodeNARC rules, or maybe the, co the CodeNARC rules that exist don't meet the needs of things that I want to do. So uh, there are several in here mostly related to uh, formatting that I end up turning off. Uh, like I mentioned, that the, some of the JUnit ones are a little bit problematic. Uh, this no def idea of not, like, def should be an exception. Uh, and it works great for Spring Boot projects, but not necessarily with all Grails projects. Uh, and yeah, so there are, there are several things. I published the, the links to these slides uh, on Twitter, so you can, you can take a look at my opinions on some of these things as well. Uh, but the, the next thing that I wanted to show and, uh, is how to work with CodeNARC itself. So uh, CodeNARC, is a GitHub a project on GitHub that you can uh, check out, just like uh, anything else. And uh, <clears throat> in particular, I wrote a rule a while back uh, called could be switch. And so the way that this works, if you want to extend CodeNARC uh, to 
add something new for your team is that uh, you extend one of these existing uh, existing classes, in this case, just a generic uh, AST visitor rule. And so if I look at what's in here, uh, we get some information about uh, kind of what we see e on each iteration of, uh, of CodeNARC. So you can uh, uh, selectively apply this or not apply this rule. Uh, and, and there's other useful information in here. Like I said, it's on GitHub, so you can check this out and look at it as well. So if I go back to this could be switch rule, what I did is uh, uh, did an iteration over every if else block and checked if you just have a, a list of if this, if this, if this. If there's an if that, uh, then it, it doesn't catch. But uh, for that case, if the, in this case, if the counter is more than two, if you have if this, if this, if this, then you can really convert that into a switch statement. That's just one example of something that uh, maybe you want to, to customize for you and your team. Uh, and uh, if so, this is how to do it. Uh, I ended up uh, contributing this back to CodeNARC itself, so it's now part of the, uh, the main, main repository here. And one of the interesting things about the CodeNARC project is that it actually runs the tests and runs CodeNARC against itself. So if I do something in here like add a uh, double, double space, uh, or sorry, double new line in here, and run these tests, uh, it may take a bit to do so, uh, but the, the CodeNARC uh, rule for that should, should trigger here, of course risking it a little bit by trying to run this live and hopefully it works as I expect it to. Um, uh, oh, and now it's, now it's sinking. Oh, all is lost. Um, anyway, so I'll continue talking while this is running and hopefully we'll get the uh, results that uh, CodeNARC fails or a, in, in particular a test of the CodeNARC runner fails because I have this violation in, in the code. Uh, and so you can test out any of these new rules that you create yourself by writing the tests in the project itself. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's finally running the tests here. So it's testing that it's running CodeNARC against CodeNARC itself. And yeah, okay, so you can trust me that, that this failed. If I remove that uh, and then rerun this, then uh, we get everything is happy again. So in order to hook this together, uh, it's a little bit more complicated. So if you wanna add a specific uh, rule like this, this one that I wrote and the uh, tests, of course, uh, it, it gets a little bit more complicated, but luckily, uh, Sergio has written a Grails guide to do this. Uh, even though it's, it's in the Grails guide repository, it is pretty generic information that you could apply to uh, lots of different build configs, including a Spring Boot project. And so uh, this is a really good thing to follow. Uh, it goes through not only which classes need to be extended, but also how to hook that back into your Gradle build for Grails or another Gradle-based project. Uh, and so hopefully we've gone through a few things that uh, are, are useful to you, how to use CodeNARC in general, uh, that you can extend it, where to find the information for uh, contributing to CodeNARC, uh, and how to, how to extend it to use your own custom rule. If uh, you want to read the documentation, uh, which I highly suggest that you do. Uh, there's information about what each rule does specifically, because uh, once you start adding CodeNARC rules, or maybe if you uh, start updating your project and you find, oh, this rule that never broke before has suddenly started breaking, you can look into the documentation to figure out uh, what's changed. There's a really nice change log at the root of the project, uh, which tells you which rules uh, have which impact. You can also uh, run it via command line uh, or ant or anything else. Uh, and then there's a really nice developer guide that I didn't link in here, but that I should. Uh, if you go to that left side of the CodeNARC website, there is a, a really nice script to add new rules and contribute back to CodeNARC itself if you uh, get to that point with your custom rule.
uh, or just want to contribute uh, a fix to uh, if there is a, a particular rule that's been bugging you because it has a false positive all the time, uh, we do welcome con contributions uh, on, on GitHub, of course. Uh, a few more resources here. You should uh, subscribe to the mailing list. Uh, that's the best way to learn about when new releases are coming. Uh, I think recently Chris has started, uh, Chris is the, the project lead, has started posting these to the Groovy mailing list as well. Uh, but the, the CodeNARC one is a good place, to, especially if you want to like propose a new rule as well. Uh, but you need feedback as to whether it's a good idea. The mailing list is the, the place to go. Uh, there is, of course, the link again to the project on GitHub. It's the CodeNARC organization and the CodeNARC repository. Okay. And if you are, I have to admit that these are a bit outdated. It's been a while since I've done a Grails project. Uh, but if you want some examples of the things that I've turned on and off in previous projects, I have links to to here from my, uh, my GitHub. And uh, yeah, so we have a couple of minutes left. Uh, is there anything that you'd like me to show or that you have questions about in general? So to repeat for everyone, the question is, is there anything that automatically fixes some of these violations? And uh, there is not anything built into CodeNARC itself that fixes them automatically. Some of them are things that the IDE catches too, for example, unused imports. So if you have uh, IntelliJ, for example, uh, you can set uh, the automatic import optimization, which would fix it for you automatically. But there's nothing in CodeNARC itself. What I've seen some other teams do for uh, other static analysis tools, uh, the Spring team in, for, in particular, has uh, a custom grade or sorry, Maven uh, thing that they use that uh, applies specific formatting rules to, uh, to their project, and it has to run before you can check in their code. But that's something that they created uh, themselves and that uh, you could certainly do for something like CodeNARC as well. You're welcome. Okay, so are you... Uh, going to try this on your your next project, or who who is going to? Sorry, <laughs> yay! Okay, um, yeah. The let's see. I, I can end it if no one else has questions. Okay. <laughs>